my class, it's Miss Kelly, and we're going to take a look at our numbers today. Some numbers and math. So we've been talking a lot about counting all the way up to 100. An easy way to do it is by tens. So let's practice with our tens cards. You say it, and then I'll wait a second before I say it. And 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. Remember, we can see how many tens are in there. You look at the first two digits, there are 10 tens and 100, and no more, no extra. 100. Well, I have our 100 chart out right here. And this 100 chart starts with the number one, and it goes all the way to 100 by one. There's a message on here from God and his word in the Bible. So teach us to number our days. Yes. And God created the world with order and numbers are in order. And the days of the week are in order. A calendar uses number order to count the days and the calendar time. Now these numbers here are all in order. We're starting with one, we're going all the way across. But I was wondering if you could see some patterns in this number chart. If you look closely at this number chart, the first row, remember rows go from left to right. These are all rows going from left to right, left to right. Those are the rows, the rows. That's horizontal, like this stick, horizontal, going from left to right, horizontal. But what if we look at the columns? These columns go from down to up. These columns, from down to up. Columns go vertical, vertical, up and down, up and down, vertical. If we look across the rows, we see that in the first row, it's the ones, the ones. There's one digit. And then the ending number starts the next family, the ten family or the teen family. This next row, let's see what, Kind of pattern do you see here with this row? I see something that's the same for every number. There's a one in front. Every one of these numbers in this row has the one in front until you get to the next set of numbers, the 20 family starts. But then when you go to this row, all of these numbers start with a two. So the 20 family, they all start with a two. And then this tells us what's coming next, the 30 family. So this row, they all start with threes. The next row, 40s, they all start with four. 50s, every number starts with five in that row. And it keeps going, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s. Now, what if we look at the columns up and down. Do you see anything that's the same here with these columns? Oh, I see the second digit is the same in the column. It's the same. So we've got 11, 21, 31, 41, 51, 61, 71, 81, 91. What about this column? The second digit, they're all twos. So this column is twos are the second digit. 12, 22, 32, 42, 52, 62, 72, 82, 92. What about this column? The second digit is a three for every one of those numbers. The next column, yep, I see a pattern. The second digit is a four for every number in that column right there. 
and the fives are all here in this column, the sixes, the sevens, the eights. Okay, so you can see patterns. You can see the different columns up and down and the different rows left to right. It's kind of fun to find different things like that in our numbers. Numbers can have lots of patterns. And then another way to show numbers is by looking at a graph. And we've looked at graphs in our classroom a lot this year. And this is a graph that I think that you've seen before. I know you've seen this graph before actually. And this graph has some objects for us to take a look at. And it also has numbers. Now graphs show us how much of something we have. So if we look at this graph and we see poop cans, cats, strawberries, soccer balls, and jack-in-the-boxes. You can just look at this graph and look at the objects and see which object group had more. Well, there are more jack-in-the-boxes. I can see that this column is taller than all of these other columns. Which object group had the least, the smallest amount? I can just see with my eyes that this column is shorter than all of these other columns. So this one, the soup cans had the least amount, the least amount. So you could also read this graph by looking at the numbers. So which group had more? Well, I see the numbers. 10 is the most, 10 is the biggest number here on my graph. So the group of 10 had more than the other group. Which group had the least amount, the smallest number? Well, I see the smallest number here is six. Right here, six is smaller than seven and eight, nine and 10, so six. The group that had six had the least amount of objects, okay? So that is a graph, and graphs are really good for reading information, for telling us things. So let's see if we can, oh, we can leave that up. But we're gonna take a look at another way that you can look at columns. If you see sometimes in our graphs, let's see what I have here. I'm gonna to try to move you down a little bit so that you can see what I have on my desk. There we go. So I'm gonna have some connecting cubes and I have three different colors and I grouped my cubes by color. So I put all the blues together, all the oranges together and all the greens together. So if we look over at my desk and I get my cubes and I'm gonna try to make like a graph here. I'm gonna put them side by side and make sure that they're even. So I'm showing the exact height, how tall each of them are. I'm going to line this one up. So I've kind of just made a graph right there. Can you tell me which color group has more, the most? Yes, the orange group. You can tell by just looking at it that it's taller, that it has more cubes in it than the other two groups. Which group has less than the other groups? Which color has less than the other? You can just look at it and see. This blue group is smaller than the other two groups. You can see that. You can also count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And we know that three is less than six. Three is less than six, but six is more than three. Six is more than three. So you can make your own graphs with connecting cubes like that. Just make sure you line them up evenly. Make sure they're even whenever you line them up. Because what would happen if I put my greens way up here? It almost looks like I have the same amount of greens, but I really don't. I don't have any down here. So make sure you line them up just like that. And then you can also stand them up and see your graph just like that. Okay, so let's look at the graphs that are on your math paper today. So for math, you have page 183 and 184. 
It is graph sporting event 710. Oh, so we're graphing sports that children like. So in the first one, it says, circle the sport that is the most favorite. So they asked some children what sport they liked. And then they put footballs or soccer balls or baseballs in a graph to show how many children liked each of the sports. So when you look at this graph, you can just right away see which sport did they like the most. You can see that it's the soccer balls they like the most. Which sport did they like the least? You can just see it with your eyes. This one is smaller than these other two. But you can also see on this chart that there are numbers. And so you can look at the numbers. I see these numbers going up on the side. One, two, three, four, five. So there are five footballs. And I can see that there are five by just looking at that number right there, five. That's where the football stopped. Where did the soccer ball stop? Well, they stopped at the number 10. So there are 10 soccer balls. Where did the baseball stop? They stopped at the number three. Just look at the number right there, three. And then you can answer the questions here. Mark an X on the least favorite. What was the least favorite sport? It looks like it would be the baseball. So you'd put an X there. Circle, which sport is less? Are there less soccer balls or less baseballs? Soccer or baseball? Baseball, yes. Then up here in the graph, it says circle the sport that has the most favorite. Which one is the most favorite? Well, you can easily see that's the tallest column. And then count and write how many balls are in all. Oh, how many balls are in all? Well, I'll show you an easy way to count all these balls. You see that you have 10 right here. There are 10 soccer balls. So you know you have 10. You don't have to count those 10 soccer balls one at a time. You know it's 10. And you can see right here that you have five of these. But what is 10 and five more? 10 and five more. 10, count on, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 10 and five more is 15. So we know we've got 15 right here. And then let's count these guys too. This is 15, 16, 17, 18. There are 18 balls in all. Remember, an easy way to start your counting and adding is by looking at the biggest amount that you have. I know this is 10, so I'm gonna start with 10 and count on from 10 and count the rest of them after 10. And then on the back, you have another graph. Circle the sport that is the most favorite on this graph. And you can just look at it and see. There's badminton, croquet, and tennis. Look at the numbers. I see seven for croquet. Circle the sport that is the most favorite. Well, you can see that's the most favorite. There's more croquet than there are, or there's more badminton than there are croquet or tennis. It's badminton that has the most. Seven, badminton. And then when you go over here, mark an X on the least favorite. So which group has the least amount, the smallest amount? I can just see it right here. That's smaller right there. There's only three. So it's the tennis, the tennis. And circle which is more. Are there more croquet balls or tennis balls? Which one has more? Well, I can see right here, five is more than three. Five is more than three. Ooh, how many more though is it? How many more? Croquet balls are there than tennis balls. Well, if we stop right here at three for the tennis, croquet went on and added two more. After they got to three, they added two more. So there's two more croquet balls than there are tennis balls. Count and write how many balls are all together. Oh, remember what I like to do? I like to get my biggest amount and start from there. So I know that I have seven badminton seven badminton. So count on from seven. There's seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15. That's an easy way to count if you start with your biggest number and then count on from that biggest number. Okay, I hope you have fun doing your sporting graphs and you can tell me how you did next time we get together. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.